The jet can't just take off by itself. There's a thousand other functions, though, to making these jets fly you're going to see right here. And we'll watch them take off right now. Well, uh, what you see behind your jet still flying around the local area, uh, the big umbrella exercise we're doing is Pacific Raptor, and that is to bring in some aggressor jets to fight against our F-22s, uh, bring in our refuelers, and uh, work together to do some uh, air combat type of training. Uh, during that time, we had an exercise internal to 154th with our 15th wing partners and even our Nevada Air National Guard partners uh, with their C-130s. Uh, the name of the exercise was called Ho'i Kaika, and it was uh, an ability to train from multiple locations with multiple aircraft, uh, move pieces back and forth, all in effort to generate air power to help protect our skies. Uh, the total entirety of the exercise was just about three days. Focused, deployed training in a simulated environment. So we uh, ended up doing locations here at Hickam, as well as Kaneohe Bay and Hilo. So we had three different locations ongoing at the same time. Uh, Kaneohe Bay, the Marines were a fantastic support for us, letting us use their airfield, where we were able to set up uh, some uh, navigation systems, some security systems, and some communication systems uh, with some F-22s over there to help them out. And then Hilo, uh, we were planning some more deployed locations, still some communications, uh, uh, things for our four support squadron, like uh, a field kitchen, and having our civil engineers able to set up some tents and some support equipment. And then we uh, had jets take off to meet out in our southern airspace to do the simulated fights that they were training to uh, as far as pilots and support aircraft. So ACE is a uh, scheme of maneuver that the Air Force is developing. Uh, we have the uh, PACAF ACE CONEP uh, to where now we are trying to be more agile, taking aircraft, people, equipment to disperse and still generate air power to defend a hub and spoke operation and continue to achieve and fight for air dominance throughout the Pacific. The background for ACE, as we continue to advance our, uh, our military as well, our peers are. Uh, so as a way, ACE is a uh, new approach kind of thinking, going new as old again, uh, World War II style, island hopping across the Pacific. ACE is kind of the new way uh, of doing that. How are we going to move troops uh, and also supplies uh, with a smaller footprint um, so generating uh, as much air power as we can with the smallest footprint, smallest amount of uh, people and equipment possible. With the Air Force, our, our mission is to be able to deploy anytime, anywhere. And since we're with a combat communications squadron, we have to be able to set up communication links from one point to another anywhere in the world. So that's what we're doing here today. and. Uh, being able to communicate uh, enables the, less, the rest of the services, I think, to work uh, more effectively together. I'm just happy to be out here working on equipment. Um, you know, everything doesn't always work out the way you want, so when you run into a problem, it's a huge learning opportunity. And uh, I really like being able to troubleshoot uh, problems and work with a great group of guys. We could actually operate anywhere. Um, we could build from the build from anywhere, <laughs> basically. Uh, we have it goes from RF to uh, tr cyber transport, then cyber ops, and then to my position, client systems, which provides the services to the clients. My job is important because if they don't have the internet capabilities or if they can't access their emails, they may have some type of. Uh, email that may have gone through that if they don't retrieve that there might be some information that they may need. Uh, absolutely proud. We've never seen an exercise like this taken to the extent of the challenge of multiple locations for a, basically a, a single wing or a single organization. Um, there were so many new things we challenged our airmen with uh, that they haven't seen before. Many of the, the folks in leadership positions in the wing. Uh, the last time they did an exercise was before they were even sub-commanders. Uh, many of the new airmen haven't even done an exercise before and this is just a stepping stone into the things that we want to get better at and it's uh, a place for us to grow from. Uh, the next challenge is taking the debrief as we say in the flying world and that's the hardest part is to wrap uh, the lessons up in a simple and uh, logical and understandable format so that our airmen 
can take time to get better and focus our training. So one step along the way, we'll see what comes out of this. We have some good areas that we saw. I think there was a lot of fun. There's a lot of stories come out of it. Probably a lot of frustration too. But from that, we will find areas where the next six months, one year of training will get after those areas and we always want to get after our weakest areas. So that's kind of the idea of Ho'i Kaika is that fortification of skills.